Good morning to you. I'm Zanilo Evangelista, and welcome to our Tropical Weather Outlook for today, Sunday, June 2nd, 2024. Let's start off with the National Hurricane Center homepage um, with nothing, once again, expected over the next week in the Atlantic. Things remaining quiet right now. And in the Eastern Pacific, there is an area of interest still, although it does seem like this will probably go away too, um, and we'll probably be stuck or at least with quiet in the eastern pacific as well for at least the foreseeable future although things maybe start to change maybe starting to change at least in the eastern pacific as we head into the next several weeks closer towards mid-june and that change will also come in the atlantic too um and we'll talk about that in a moment but right now area of interest in the eastern pacific with a 10 percent chance um, and the National Hurricane Center mentions it is a disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms and development of the system appears unlikely while the disturbance moves little during the next day or two. Um, you can see it on the satellite too, especially that area of interest. There's a lot of convective activity with it. Um, it does actually seem pretty um, vigorous in terms of its convective activity, especially over the last several hours. Maybe it's trying to fight back. Maybe it's trying to do something. But the National Hurricane Center has a very low chance of anything happening with this. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, you can see there's not much activity going on. Lots of strong upper level westerlies. Um, and just generally, the atmosphere is not yet there entirely for development to occur in the Atlantic. But it is coming soon. And it is definitely interesting that even though we're not expecting development, we still continue to see a bunch of these vigorous tropical waves move off of Africa. You can actually see one moving off right now. And this has really kind of helped, I think, prime in a way things to be more favorable um, for the Atlantic, or at least it just gives that general idea that we're gonna have lots of strong tropical waves moving off this year. And you can actually see on the tropical wave analysis map, there is indeed a wave moving off of Africa right now. And I just think it is really interesting that we need to start watching some of these waves because especially in terms of early season development last year, we had development in the main development region um, this month in June. And it was because we had these very strong waves that moved at a latitude that was south enough that it was able to move over warm water. And that also has to do with the fact on why these waves are so aggressive and strong this year. Just take a look at the sea surface temperatures, um, not the anomalies, but the actual sea surface temperatures. And notice it doesn't actually show, quite show this area in kind of the southern portion of the Atlantic near the West African coast. Um, but you could see near that area, uh, sea surface temperatures are well into the upper 80s, 28, 29 degrees Celsius. That is in Fahrenheit in the upper 80s. And that is more than enough, not only for tropical cyclone development, but for sustained convective activity. And that's why sometimes we get really a lot of these strong waves to come off of Africa. And that's why we've been getting so many of these strong waves, um, really aggressive looking, especially given the time of year, it's June. Um, they would come off and they look really, really convectively active. And I certainly think that this is definitely a sign of things to come, especially given that it is kind of being helped by the fact that the sea surface temperatures in the MDR are very warm. I definitely think it has sort of a priming sort of effect on the atmosphere in the Atlantic. And I definitely think this is something, these waves that we're going to continue to see um, are going to be a sign, are going to be of a sign of things to come. And even if they don't develop in the MDR, especially in the early season, we really don't watch for these things to develop in the MDR. But once they get further west where the sea surface temperatures there are even warmer, um, it'll be really something to watch, especially for early season development when we typically see things form really only in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf and the general um, far Western Atlantic, the part of the Atlantic that is much closer. So that is right on our doorstep, at least here, um, in terms of U.S. interests and even Caribbean interests, too, um, these very strong tropical waves will really help in terms of kickstarting development in this region of, of the world, of the Atlantic, where it does actually look like we might get some sort of development um, in probably the next few weeks, although at least over the next week or so, 
if we once again take a look at the GFS model. Not much really happening, although as I did mention, at least of the 60 in the GFS, there is something getting going in the Pacific. You could actually see it um, just south of Mexico, kind of moves into, forgot this region, but I think it's the Gulf of Tehuantepec, I think, um, moves into this region. Um, you can see that there's some sort of defined sort of signature and vorticity that tries to get going. And when we look at development, at least in the models, we always try to look for areas of vorticity that bundles um, into one concentrated area. And we do see that that does try as it moves into Mexico. And this is roughly now getting into around um, the one week time frame. So maybe as we head into the mid to middle to latter portions of next week, we might get another marking um, by the National Hurricane Center in the Eastern Pacific for development. I do believe that there is other models that also indicate a potential development too, it, as well um, occurring in the Pacific. But meanwhile, in the Atlantic, at least in terms of our interests, things still remain quiet. Although you could see by seven days out, GFS does kind of have this interesting signal in the MDR. Maybe it's also hinting at more of these very strong tropical waves moving off of Africa. And I'm telling you, in this part of the world, it'll definitely help in terms of priming um, development for the early season, especially when you see, and I'm actually gonna open this in a new tab so we could kind of get rid of everything else, especially when you see a bunch of these greens. And I continue to emphasize this, but this is really important, especially when we're looking at potential development in potential regions, or at least the time frame of when we should be expecting or looking out for the potential for development in our general basin, even in the Eastern Pacific and in general, the Western Atlantic, look at where all these greens are. Um, in general, this is the map for the, the velocity potential, AKA really where we look at when it comes to MJO activity um, in the world. And these, these greens and these blues represent rising motion in the atmosphere and especially as we head after or after the first week of June, so this is at least on this map here, because this this um, y-axis represents the date, and you can really see once we get past the first week of June, especially um, right here, this is our part. This is our part of the world. This is the Western Hemisphere, the Caribbean, and you know Central and South America. Notice where all these greens begin to set up. They begin to set up in our part of the world, meaning after early june and especially into the middle to latter portion of june we start seeing rising motion settle into the western hemisphere right on cue as well with the first few weeks of hurricane season um and i do want to remind you that indeed it is important and it is definitely interesting to watch out for this because in in terms of climatology at least with for the first 10 days of june this is the area that we tend to watch for development. We watch the Western Caribbean, Eastern Pacific also starts getting active as well, even though they should, they typically start getting active in May and we haven't had any May activity, neither in the Eastern Pacific or the Atlantic, um, but especially the Pacific. So this might be their time potentially to shine and get their first sort of development to occur um, in the Pacific with whatever happens. But in the Atlantic too, it's, it's our time to also watch, especially in the Caribbean, um, and Gulf, so really this part of the basin, um, especially as we head um, past, I guess, the first week of June, looks like things might start getting interesting, and maybe we might actually, indeed, within the next two weeks, have our first named storm um, on our hands. Um, but just want to remind you really quickly of climatology in the Atlantic. Um, here we are, June 1st, or more like June 2nd now, so roughly right around here. Um, looks like we might get our first name storm soon, um, but we still have long ways to go when it comes to activity in the Atlantic, especially by the time we get to the peak. Um, we're still many, many weeks away from the peak of the hurricane season. That's not till September. And even then, we don't really start seeing a rapid increase acti in activity um, till we get to August. So we still have ways to go till we get any real activity. So really wouldn't pay attention to the fact that we don't have a name storm right now. I know it may seem a little weird, especially given that we're used to getting at least one or two name storms by now, um, especially from activity that would maybe happen um, in the preseason in May, which we've not had so far this year. 
Um, but I can assure you definitely over the next several weeks, as we head closer towards the peak, things will start to get much more active and we'll definitely um, get our first name storm soon. Once again, watching the potential for development in mid-June, maybe in both basins, we might actually get um, activity um, happening close to the same time when we might get both of our first name storms. We'll see. Um, but definitely looks like the at least the background or at least the foundation for watching for the potential is there and certainly something we'll be monitoring over the next um, week or so. Um, but with that being said, does, again, not really much else going on. Um, and as I said last night on my stream, enjoy the quiet while it lasts, because I'm pretty sure as we head, over, as we head through these next 182, 83 days or so, definitely by the end of the hurricane season, I'm sure we'll probably all be begging for quiet. So definitely enjoy the quiet while it lasts because I'm very sure in a few weeks, it'll definitely change for sure. With that being said, though, I'm going to end it off here. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. Stay safe. Peace, love, and kindness to all. And we'll talk again tomorrow.